Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to today's virtual event. This is Drive Seamless Global Collaboration with Microsoft Teams. How can direct routing unlock value from your investment? My name is Janice and I'm going to be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live events and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and our phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the Q&A panel. By joining, you are agreeing to this experience. Attendees may access the event recording in the coming days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right-hand side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the session and then again after the presentation. I'd like to thank you for your patience during those announcements. Now, on to the main event. Kicking us off today from Tata Communications, we have Partnership Development Director, Will Chadwick. So without any further delay, Will, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Janice. Yes, so um, welcome everyone to the um, webinar run by Tata Communications and Microsoft, uh, where we're going to explore cloud calling within Teams. Um, so I'm, I'm Will Chadwick, I'm your host. Um, my role is to introduce the presenters, but first I uh, just wanted to sort of recap a little bit about Tata Communications. Um, so we are part of the 100 billion turnover Tata group with uh, nearly 700,000 employees worldwide. Um, and Tata Communications provides digital infrastructure services um, to enterprise and to service provider customers. And, and we're famous for our network. I mean, we've just had confirmation um, over the last month that our um, position in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for network services has been renewed for the eighth successive year, which we're quite proud about. Um, but we also have a very tight partnership with Microsoft. Um, we're a gold partner and we provide a number of workloads um, under that banner. Um, we're also one of a select number of service providers who will be launching um, Operator Connect later on this year. And um, Sandy Walker from Microsoft will be talking about that um, a little bit later if you have any questions. Um, so we do have a small number of um, slides to present over the next 30 minutes on why you should look at activating phone system within Teams uh, across your organisation. Um, so Sandy's going to be leading off and uh, Sandy looks after the uh, global partner programme uh, for Teams uh, across Microsoft. Um, Blanca from Tata Communications has worked very closely with Microsoft over a number of years and she's also I think pretty much been attached to every single delivery of our global SIP trunks um, contracts that we have across Europe. And then Vernon isn't going to be talking, but he will be answering any questions that you might have later on um, when, we, when we finish the slides. And Vernon's our, our technical solutions expert. So you are all muted. Um, so please, if you do have any questions, post them in the chat. Um, we will ask a couple of questions as well, just to sort of gauge where the audience is um, in relation to cloud calling and um, just reply in the chat. We're not going to run this as a poll. Um, and as Janice has said, the session is recorded. Um, we're not going to be mentioning any company names, so you're completely free to put any questions that you might want to have in there. And that's it really. So let's get started. Over to you, Sandy. Perfect. Perfect. So Will, thanks very much. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, it's great to be working with you again uh, and great to be working with uh, a partner like Tata Communications, who I completely agree with is, uh, is, a, is a great partner and a very skilled partner and providing those amazing services at scale uh, all around the world. So thank you very much for that. So what I want to do was um, start with, um, you know, um, a few comments, I think it's stating the obvious here, but I'll start before this because over the last few years, we've seen a rapid rise in the adoption of cloud-based services. Fairly, fairly normal comment. The last year has obviously just propelled that. A great comment I love is from uh, the Microsoft Chief Executive, Chief Executive uh, Satya, Satya Nadella, um, who said that you know we've seen two years of digital transformation in two months, which is quite amazing even more amazing was that quote was literally a year ago today or a year ago within this week, a year ago. And since then, it's only been kind of compounded and continuing since then. So, you know, but that that new um, now that we're starting to move through this pandemic, hopefully starting to emerge from it, 
uh, we're starting to see other changes coming through as well. And that is, you know, kind of the need for a different way of working. You know, we're, we're seeing a new set of opportunities, a new set of challenges, challenges, opportunities, spin them however you wish, but the need for a new workplace, a need for a hybrid workplace. Companies, and more importantly, employees, are looking, asking, or demanding for more flexible, a more flexible workplace. We've proved over the last year, you've proved, we've proved, we've all proved over the last year that generally uh, we can work more flexible, more flexibly, depending on the industry you're in. Obviously, those that are been blessed with continuing to work as we've proved that we can work more flexibly um, and uh, and so people have learned from that and people want that situation to change uh, sorry situation to stay um, and to continue that movement towards more flexible working so we need to think about how we not only collaborate but how, how we communicate um, and then on top of that how we look at the physical spaces as well now today we'll focus very much on the communication side of that the need for a more uh, modern and more appropriate communication system so Microsoft Teams and phone system. So, you know, people, as I say, want to communicate anytime, any place on any device. They need a business grade communication system that they can trust and provides all the features and functions they require to do their job. You know, importantly, the telephone system is part of this and importantly, it needs to be integrated into the daily work lives, making collaboration easier and more efficient. That's why we think Microsoft Teams is bringing that all together and making it more simple. So it's not only around actually kind of just a telephone system, it's actually how you collaborate um, further and beyond kind of just that, just that phone call. You know, you do need that reliable, high quality PBX, but then also it needs to be safe, secure and compliant. And that's why build, building on Microsoft 365 is great. But now let's, let's start to take it back now to some of the challenges that we talked about. So, you know, kind of, and really is here that the fact that, you know, kind of you know, Microsoft Teams, we do want to make calling simple. We don't make it complicated. We don't want to make it complicated from an operational or business perspective or a technical perspective. It needs to be simple. You know, we've seen how simple this can be. And we've seen how a, a simple program like this and simple proposition like this can make your customer or so make your employees lives easier and they can adopt it quicker and be more productive. So let's look at some of the challenges then that we hope to fix around this. So let me just listen to maybe four key areas of challenges or the benefits around this. So first of all, we think about the users. I like to really focus on the end user and the end user experience. So that, you know, things like change management is super important around all of this. But you know, kind of, so when we align this to the start of the conversation, that flexible workplace requirement, Teams really does provide that simple tool to enable that business grade telephony, collaboration and productivity. We can allow your employees to work the way they want as i said they can work from home they can still receive or make phone calls on the preferred device that could be a mobile that could be a laptop it could be a, you know it could be a team's phone they can still communicate on the device they wish you know calling and phone calls is just another form of collaboration so why aren't we including this as well so it makes sense to have all your collaboration tools in one place so teams when we're talking when we're chatting I mean, like right now, so I'm chatting with you and this is in essence, you know, kind of it's a some form of collaboration, a phone call, but I'm still using other tools. So I've got PowerPoint, I've got, you know, kind of everything open. So I'm working with my collaboration tools in one space in Teams. And you could too can have that and your employees can have that. So the files they work in, the files they share in meetings, whilst they're on that telephone call in that meeting place, it's all in one place, it's all within Teams. And also to make life easier for the for the end user. Small example here, you know, we're all creatures of habit. Uh, we like to use things like the call history to actually go back to who we call, to review who we call or recall them. And that history is all there in Teams, as is the voicemail and the voicemail recordings, or maybe something more modern like the transcription of the meeting or the transcription for the calls themselves, all there within Teams to making that user experience even better. But none of this stacks up without business benefits and from an ROI and TCO perspective. And of course, we know that you know, if the numbers don't stack up, you won't do it. Um, and first and foremost, from a, from a business perspective, it's much more simple to manage. So it is more efficient from a business productivity perspective. Team sits within the 365 as Microsoft 365, as I mentioned. A lot of you will know and already use Microsoft 365. So it's another simple add on within that suite of a larger application. But, you know, importantly, the removal of other external costs can have a great benefit as well. You know, if we're talking about phone calls and PBXs. Those legacy PBXs, they cost money. 
They cost money to kind of to buy, to manage, maintain, and up upgrade, and you know, kind of and ultimately replace as well. But Teams is already there within Microsoft 365, and Teams is within it with pretty much within every license within 365. And then you can add on the PBX and phone system features very easily from a license perspective. But more importantly, at a business perspective, the TCO and the ROI is there as well. I'll, uh, and later on, I'll share a link to a uh, Forrester report for you all to look at from a, from a business perspective to look at the ROIs. But what we're seeing is from an, from an average customer perspective, kind of the ROI is in, in a matter of months, not years for traditional, um, for traditional investments. But then, you know, you need to run this. So let's think about some of the operational side of things as well. You know, Teams is a very elastic solution, first of all, allowing you to change and be dy more dynamic as your business requires. Um, and I'd like to talk about a couple of examples here. Now, this first example is kind of a, from a kind of a macro or an engineering level. So within Microsoft, obviously we we build teams and roll teams out. But you know, at, at the height of the pandemic, you know, we were rolling out more than a million users a day on Teams. A million users a day. I mean, that is a quite an elastic platform with no hiccups and no degradation to service or problems to end users. I mean, that is quite an, quite an incredible scale to show the kind of elasticity behind this, so the flexibility around it. Um, and that distills all the way down to kind of how we manage it and operate it, um, and then all giving you all the tools, either directly or through target communications to man manage it more effectively and efficiently as well. But then we take that to an organizational level, um, working with target communications, we've had an example last year, we had a customer that needs to go, go, go live instantly. There were, you know, again, early days of the pandemic, they needed to move their legacy infrastructure was not suitable for a telephony requirement they needed to move to teams and within a matter of a week tens of thousands of users were live on teams and live with telephony quite an incredible proposition and then because it's so you know kind of the intuitive nature of teams the users were uh, using it very quickly and effectively using it very quickly so the user adoption was very high as well and then last but not least kind of the the technical benefits around it you know guess what it's a telephone system as well it's a pbx so yes, it has a rich set of features and functions to enable your employees and yourselves to actually to use it as a proper telephone system, you know. But alongside that, we understand the real world. We understand the requirement to integrate perhaps into some legacy assets, but also then into, to, 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 in, to integrate into other external assets as well. So things like, you know, the, the, we might need to integrate into an external contact center. We can do that through APIs or you know, into, so into some maybe call recording if you have that from a compliance perspective. So all of these tools are there and can be integrated very easily. So that's a quick view of you know, kind of where we are from a team's perspective and some of the high level benefits. I think what I'd like to do now actually is uh, to then ask a quick question of you all. And this is where we want you to uh, use your uh, Q&A panel. So a quick quick polling question. So answer this in the, in the Q&A window and we can, we can see that. Uh, just as a, as a reminder, if you answer into the Q&A window, it is uh, confidential because so we see that. So don't worry about writing anything in there for the moment. Um, and then if you have any questions later on or at any stage which you want to ask, uh, we can publish that through the Q&A window, but we, we publish it. We control that. So anything right in there is, is private for the moment. So quick question to you all. Um, so what is the driver? Or what is your driver for embracing phone system within Teams? So is it A, you know, cost savings on phone calls? And we'll cover that in more detail in a, in a few moments. Aligning yourselves with customers and supply chain. So kind of building that collaboration perspective kind of internally and externally. Uh, better collaboration for employees for that kind of that internal aspect or other. And if you could give us some ideas, that'd be great. We're seeing, so while, while, we, uh, while, we, while we pop those questions in the answer in the, in the Q&A box, um, I will say that what we are seeing is a great deal of demand at the moment, not only for Teams, you've seen probably seen some of the public numbers, you know, 145 million daily active users that we're seeing at the moment that we're reporting to, but also from a phone system and a PBX perspective, huge growth area in this because people understand the benefits of using just one tool for everything. They've already they've already bought the tool because they already use 365 and Teams, so then just uh, livening up kind of our phone system as well. So, so I think we're seeing some, some questions coming through, some points coming through in the Q&A, so thank you for that. And then in preparation, then what I'll be doing now is uh, in a moment, handing back over to Will. So, uh, so while I hand over to Will, uh, as a quick reminder around Teams, because what we want to do, as I said at the start, is you know, just make calling simple. So all-in-one communication systems, 
any time, any place, any device. You know, rich calling features, it's a PBX, the streamlined kind of that management and setup. And all of that can be augmented and made even more simple and more cost effective. When you look at people like Tata Communications, I have to be I have to be neutral. Say there are other people there. But I do I, I do think Tata Communications provide an amazing service around this, um, and then they can provide the, the next level of detail, granularity, and managed services around that as well. So with that, I think uh, we'll over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Sandy. So hopefully my slides are visible. That one. Um, so um, I think you just sort of called out um, something that I just I need to expand on is that the customers who come to Tata and ask us to provide support on direct routing within Teams, effectively they're making a decision and the decision is that they want to turn off other methods of telephony and make sure that the Teams application becomes ubiquitous across the organization and and if we don't have full and effective end-to-end -end services to support our customers then there will still continue to be shadow um, technologies used within an organization so you will still have your employees still using phones to make calls to um, external partners or whatever that they, they that they shouldn't be doing so it's really important that we provide this whole range of end-to-end -end services and, and one of the things that we have seen which is quite interesting is sometimes the driver for a company to embrace um, the calling elements within teams is that their supply chain um, or their end customers are also doing the same thing so if you want to be federated and you want to have a complete interlock with your, your um, existing network of suppliers and, and customers, sometimes that's actually a driver as well. So it's not definitely not just about saving money. It's not just about efficiencies for the end user. Um, but we so we provide this range of end to end services. I'm not going to read every bullet point out, but there are there are a few ones which I think are particularly important. And, and I'd say within implementation, um, a lot of companies that we've worked with, and I think in Europe we've, um, I don't know, it's, it's something like a dozen large customers because we, we tend to work with the bigger international type of organisations. And they might have had an acquisition trail over a number of years, and there could be a lot of legacy IT um, floating around in different parts of regions or in, within organisations in the same country even. Um, so we think it's particularly important that you have that support on the network discovery to providing some PBX assessment of your legacy estate. And we, we use a service provided by a partner of ours called Univonics. Um, and that enables us to come into an organization and establish um, exactly what you've got, uh, which might sound quite straightforward, but actually um, we, we do uncover some quite um, interesting um, bits of deployment. So because we're experts in network, you know, this is something that we comes relatively easy to us. So that, that's a sort of bit of a call out on the implementation. Um, the network services, I'm going to show a slide, next slide, which shows you how we do that and Blank will be able to um, answer any further questions on that. She's covering off a little bit about how we um, offer some services there. And also we do support Microsoft um, and devices, uh, meeting room management. It's so not particularly easy, but I mean, we we use meeting rooms ourselves in our offices. Um, and then the other one that I think is particularly important is um, a lot of organizations will say have you know, plenty of Cisco still within their um, deployment. So it's absolutely imperative that you get interoperability between any sort of applications that you might have um, across your business. And that's something that we definitely put our hands up and we we're sort of looking after a few customers who have got very sort of uh, wide ranging deployments and, and it's up to us to make sure that those are knitted together and that teams work seamlessly across each one of those. Um, in terms of applications, Sandy made a good call out there um, talking about call recording and also the link into contact center. I mean, in the in the new world, contact center is becoming increasingly important as a way of of uh, retaining your engagement with your um, end consumers. And what 
uh, Tata is able to offer a, a range of contacts of contact centers, and one of those is one which is actually fully integrated with Microsoft Teams. So if that's something that you're looking for and have that consistency across the business, uh, we can deploy that as well there. Um, so, so that's probably um, everything else. Okay. Oh yeah, service management, yeah. I mean, again, we know that a lot of customers might like to manage their own um, tenants, um, but it is something that we are providing for an increasing number of customers. And um, we do have Microsoft certified professionals and obviously the advantage of working with someone like Tata is you're not concerned about a key member of your of your staff leaving and then you're going to find some challenges on how do you actually sort of continue that tenant management. So it is something there that the service management is something we're we're quite good at and we're able to put a wrapper around di uh, direct routing provision. So I, I talked about network and talked about, um, oh, actually, sorry, I'm going to ask a, another question. <laughs> sorry, there was a quick question before I show the network side. So again, in the same way that Sandy was just sort of asking a question just as a, um, a dip check on, on wh where are you in your journey towards phone system. So it'd be interesting for um, those attending the, the webinar now, just, just maybe um, type a few words or just put A, B, C or D. Just where where are you at the moment? I mean, are you just starting? Do you actually have internal resources to manage, but you, you're still looking for the direct routing connectivity into SIP trunks, or are you looking for a, a partner to manage uh, for yourselves? So um, do type in, as Sandy said before, just type in your answers into, into the Q&A panel there. So coming back onto the network, um, again, just a very high level, but we are peered with Microsoft in every region. And in terms of our PSTN provision, we have local PSTN in 28 countries. Um, and it is absolutely sort of rock solid. So this is something that we are really keen on making sure that there's no point in trying to sort of work um, and put on top your sort of overlay if you haven't got a, a really solid underlay. And But there will be some countries in regulated countries where local voice provider is required. And again, that's um, where we really come to the fore. So because we're very experienced in this and we're able to provide our services in, um, I think it's about 200 countries. So we will always find a solution. And that's whether it's um, an SBC that has to be hosted on in your premises, which is the requirement in a number of countries, or whether it's something which we can host in a, a public cloud. And obviously, India is a particular strength of ours. Ind India is not an easy place to provide these services, but clearly it's something that we have an advantage and, and that's something we're able to crack for our customers. About 25% of, we, when we analyse the usage, about 25% of end users within our customers are needing a sort of a local voice provision and about 75% are getting their provision through those um, um, local PSTNs that we provide in the 28 countries. So that, that's what we're seeing as roughly the mix. But of course, all the noise and the difficulty is in the, in the ones where we have to have individual solutions. And we do have a, a very strong sort of range of professional services to help with that migration and then look at the user adoption. And I'm flagging that we have that capability because there's a, a big call out here that we, we're often seeing that video projects are being run separately. They're not being run as part of a Teams migration or a direct routing rollout. And um, there's a couple of, I'm, I'm thinking I've got, I can't name them, but there's a couple of big customers where we are having to provide um, those services to make sure that the integration into Teams is working effectively. So it is, it is something that we think is pretty important. And so last slide for me then is that we, we want to look after our customers. We, we recognise that everyone will have slightly different needs. Some will want to be managing their own services more. Some will be looking for us to provide a range of services and some would look like us to look after the whole um, shooting match. So if you look at, um, if, you look, if you're a customer who, who wants to manage your own tenant, so we do have um, a package which we call Control Panel and that will offer you um, an enterprise control panel to facilitate the
that um, um, setting up onto direct routing and um, we have a portal there that uh, we're able to explain a bit more detail later maybe and that's what we make available for customers who want to manage their own um, tenants and obviously you're then also getting the direct routing which we provide plugging into our global SIP trunks. Um, for customers who are looking for us to provide a little bit more, we do have our own service, including our intelligent collaboration monitoring, offering this single pane of glass. And then if you are also help, needing some assistance on change management, again, we have services there which would help to uh, look at your carrier management, looking at um, adoption and um, adoption management. Uh, we look at Nulia is one of the platforms we work with. There's others available, other individual types of support. And then finally, um, managed service, you know, in, ten, in terms of looking for um, hardware that you're needing as part of your team's provision, we do have ways of supporting there and we can automate that procurement um, and manage SBCs for you as well. So that, that's the, the three different packages for ourselves. So it's offering a range of flexibility and you know you can talk to Blanca. Uh, Jim Day is a, another of our consultants or sales specialists who will talk to you about those requirements. So that's it for me. Blanca, would you like to take over and talk a little bit of, more about where we identify some of the cost savings in telephony deployment? Thanks a lot. Well, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, where is Tata Strengths? We have been providing voice services um, across especially service provider for over decades. Um, we moved towards the enterprise segment and be around 2010 from the voice perspective. And because more co enterprise customers were driving the demands And for migrating customers to teams, especially the telephony, we started to roll out PSN replacement around 2014. So currently we offer PSN replacement in its regulations, as you can imagine, is a little bit more trickier, but um, we offer uh, SBCs or uh, um, manage SBC solution and we partnering with TCTS, we offer PSN replacement services. Um, that's actually helping customers to consolidate kind of all of their network, all of their kind of locations under the one provider. And what we offer to our customers, and that we considering we carry over 1 billion minutes um, a week, um, is high quality of Inbound calls, outbound calls. We have um, very, very kind, of, very how to use the right term. The fraud management system which we have developed to support customers, especially to ensure they they don't have any kind of fraud calls, is superior. We um, enable actually on the APIs level as well. So what we do for customers and is give me a second. Sure. Right, do apologize. There was a fee of charge for customers, consolidation of their bills and pricing comparison for, for all of their all of their uh, bills which they have with current providers. So as I mentioned, it's free of charge. Uh, we we usually tend to be between 50 to 70 percent cheaper, especially for the outbound calls and also for the inbounds. But in replacement, we don't charge customer for inbound calls. They are purely outbound calling charges. Um, that means any domestic or international inbound calls there will be free of charge. So we do provide through third party, which is tariff match and consolidation of their bills, which can be broken down to each individual countries. Um, so for example, a report can be generated for purely for APAC if you have one, uh, if you have for each country different vendor, but also it can be if you have one vendor, it's only purely CDRs upload into the portal, which is 
by using tariff match and within 24 to 48 hours they are able to generate the report um so there are multiple reports the comparison pricing comparison report uh, which i will share in the next slide provides the details of what will be the cost for customers if if they move to Tata. So many times customers are a little bit more concerned um, when it comes to sharing the details of what is their cost, which they currently have. And that's where tariff match directly with the customer. So you need to share the cost which you currently have with your current providers. So it's only just an NDA which is tariff match and it's provide and they will do the, all the work and downloading the CDRs uh, in a CSV format onto the portal. So you have the option. It's because there are other providers we can provide you a say cost saving. Um, the other report which is a tariff match is able to provide is capacity capacity report, which provides. which currently which you have um, for for particular destinations or the countries. So it can actually provide details, information. What's the volume of the bandwidth which you're using per country? The profile report provides the breakdown per country. Uh, for example, how many calls you make for each country or your users were making for each country. The bill check report is additional. Um, service which we offer to our customers once they migrate the services to Tata to ensure we can to give you a free all to be out charging you correctly. Um, we'll move on to the next slide which provides the cost comparison report when it comes to a cost saving. It's broken down to national calls, mobile or international. Also, additional provides the off peak, on peak. What we found out many times is um, with the with the audit of uh, customers' invo invoices and CDRs, is there could be a fraud calls, which could be is unnoticed to the customer. Uh, so we had example where customer um, users um, were. Or, or someone was making phone calls or hacked the, the network and were making calls um, during only certain day or certain times. So, for example, Saturday. They're even using numbers which they should didn't need to use and because they set up the call forwarding. So actually they were being charged twice. So the tariff match provides all of these details and uh, which are beneficial and most of our customers actually find it really important for them to consolidate because um it's not only just providing the cost comparison but also social information which they don't have and as i mentioned it's not just just in comparison but it can be utilized and so many calls are being made for each individual country. Um, and I will pass it right now on to Will, uh, who will provide more additional information. Yeah, th thanks, Blanca. And um, you might not have been aware, but your, um, it, was, it was very choppy. Um, so we might not have caught every one of your words there. So if people have got extra questions, they might want to sort of put those in the chat for Blanca. Because um, tar tariff matches are really sort of quite a, an important part of our um, offering. And um, I'm just calling out um, what we should do next. And tariff match is something which um, we pay to tariff match a fee. The reason we pay the fee is because we know that if you start to analyze the calling costs um, of Tata compared to our competition, um, we, we will pretty much guarantee that we will be lower. And if you're looking at where you're existing, if you've got existing analog services, you will you will save a huge amount of money. So this is a free of charge, that's what FOC means, um, comparison that we offer to our customers. You don't have to 
spend any money. You don't share anything with us. You share it with Tariff Match and they will do the benchmarking for you. It's a fantastic service. It's one that we, it's sort of one of our best kept secrets really. And I'd say anyone who's on the, um, on the, on the webinar now and you want to have this completely free of charge, just be able to be in contact with Blanca, contact with Jim, we'll be able to set that up for you. The second thing I'd also say is again, look across your business, see if there's any video projects that are underway. They might be run in parallel and really you should be trying to knit those together and look at how we'll do that integration when you're looking to integrate with phone system. So you've got full integration to any external partners that you're working with. You've got your internal video working. It's absolutely worth sort of pulling it all together. And the other thing is, I think Sandy had mentioned this a few times about the business benefits and there will always be a sort of pound shillings and pence or euros even. Um, about how do you establish um, the the benefits and um, and we'd like to sort of help you with that. It's something that we've done for a number of our customers. So obviously there's costs uh, that we are um, incurring incurring with us uh, for our services, but we do think that you'll save a lot of money and there'll be a lot of other efficiencies as well that need to be benchmarked. And we're, we're very confident on our, our ability to provide a, a great service. So we are offering a try before you buy. We can do a, a proof of concept. I think at the moment it's for um, 30 end users and you can use any of the 28 countries um, within our PSTN service. So we can make this available. You can start this as soon as possible and just try out direct routing without any commitment. And obviously the last call out for myself is if um, our salespeople have been putting their contracts in front of you, please just sign them now and then we can get started. Um, so those are the sort of call to actions for myself. Um, obviously, we'll make these available to all of you um, afterwards. And so that's the end of the, the presentations. So what we are going to suggest, I think Vernon's going to be managing the chat and might have a couple of questions to start to kick us off. But please put any extra questions into the chat and, and we can get going now for the next uh, 15 minutes or so. Or um, we, we're asking if you just want to have any further information, maybe you're feeling a bit too shy, um, email Blanca and, um, and she can provide further details as well. So I'm going to leave that slide up so you've just got Blanca's details. And um, Vernon, are there any questions yeah. to come? through that you wanted to pose? There's a few questions. I've been responding to some um, privately, but um, the, the one one question that came in was I thought would be was certainly of interest. It was someone from um, an airline industry um, that have obviously been facing some significant financial challenges in the last 12 months or so, um, and, and they're under the sort of restriction where they need to show return investment on um, anything, any sort of IT or communications projects within a year. Uh, the, the question was, you know, do we think it's possible to achieve an ROI on on a team's telephony deployment in a, in a year? I just wonder if that's something you could uh, respond to. Uh. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I, yeah, I could pick that one up because that's um, it's something not dissimilar to another customer that we had that that posed to us, and and again, it's it's something that. I think what happens is that most organizations will understand about the migration to teams. They might have been on Skype for business and they're looking to move across into teams. And that's the sort of that's the that's within the remit. And then there's a sort of OK, so what happens if I'm also introducing phone system? And if you are a customer who's already on an E5 license, then there's no incremental cost to Microsoft. Uh, sorry, to, from Microsoft. So the only cost would be um, anything incurred from ourselves and one of our management packages. And then the cost savings would come from the savings on your telephony. So I think that's that's how you would establish whether you can save money within one year by looking at something like tariff match, which Blank had uh, featured. You will understand the cost savings that you could make across your business, which can be quite considerable. And then our, our fees are very small. Um, so if you're spending a little bit of money with us, you might be saving a lot of money on your telephony. And then if you've already got your E5 license, you've already made your investment there, that should stack up. Um, if you're on an E3 license, then Sandy, I think there's a it's a few dollars per user per month as a, a, a cost of turning on the license there as well, isn't that? Correct. 
Um, and I'll, I'll just add to that as well, Will. So absolutely, because there's hard cost savings there you mentioned, uh, things like the great tool like Tariff Match. Uh, in addition, then obviously the, from an ROI perspective, there's the removal of uh, legacy assets, legacy costs that we touched on earlier on. So there's you know, kind of the maintenance fees, the, uh, the the upgrade fees from the from the PBXs, etc. So there's that kind of that there's that there's that kind of hard cost removal as well. Um, and then you kind of then then there's the, the soft benefits. I know that the soft benefits can't don't actually hardly ever get written into a business case, uh, but they are a very important factor these days, especially when we look at kind of uh, employee um, uh, wellness. Um, and that ability to transact or do their job in a better and more efficient way or in a happier way. So the, and the kind of that efficiency side of things as well is a big is a big benefit as well from a cost perspective. But that's harder to build into a business case, but it's one to be one not to be ignored. OK, we've got another question. Um, it says, can, can we share an example of how Tata Communications is enabling voice over cloud and connecting teams to able dial in and dial out the phones? In what scenarios can can this be useful to organisations? Um, I mean, I think that, that we've got multiple examples. I, I could probably name some specific examples, but we are deploying and have deployed um, teams with direct routing with phone system uh, for a number of global organizations. I think the the uh, where, where it, it, I think some of the benefits um, Sandy and, and Will just just explained, but they are they are multiple. Uh, and on top of the sort of the, the financial benefits and organizational benefits, it, it's around the, the 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 flexibility to work from anywhere, uh, which traditional telephony solutions have some abilities on, but are quite limited. So it, particularly in the current environment and probably the new what's known as a new normal, uh, the benefits are, are absolutely massive to actually allow you to not just work from anywhere, but also to be able to up and down, up scale and down scale your requirements around it in a very dynamic way, add new new sites, remove sites, etc. And it allows a, a great deal of consolidation around it as well, whereas the sort of traditional telephony environment kind of had fixed capacity. Um, it, it allows allows you to actually reduce that capacity and um, particularly things around things like PSTN calling spend. Uh, where I think we're seeing generally a, a, a massive reduction in that area and, and solutions like Teams uh, are allowing that to happen because calling is now much more IP based. Um, so I think um, that just to name some of the sort of the key benefits of the organizations we're working with are seeing and seeing very quickly as well. It, it's it's those benefits are not long term. They are very, very, very rapid in terms of the way that organizations are realizing those benefits. Cool. OK, um, I'm, um, I'm, I'm I'm seeing a question here for Sandy. Um, yeah. So Sandy, you shed some light on the innovations happening at Microsoft on Teams. What can we expect in the new hybrid work environment? Uh, yes, good question. Um, so, from a hybrid perspective, we're doing we're spending a lot of time uh, building out teams. Obviously, always innovating, adding in new features, functions all the time. There's you know kind of uh, every, every month there's new features coming. So every today, if you're a 365 user or a Teams user, you'll see that every time, not every time, but quite often on, on a frequent cycle, there's uh, new features and functions delivering. But if I take it up a level, uh, so there's you know, lots of fine tuning around that. But if I take it up a level, one of the big things around hybrid is uh, what I'll, I'll probably move towards a conversation that we're calling uh, Viva. Uh, so this is one of the more, more interesting things going on at the moment, and this is our, our whole employee experience uh, platform. So is it Teams calling per se? No, but it's the whole of the other hybrid work environment. So to enable Kind of uh, the kind of just more efficient uh, use of time and space, nothing else. Um, so when we look at the employee experience, it kind of it's not only kind of how they work more effectively, how they can work better, but actually how we can plan better as an organisation to look after our employees. But also then, how do we surface things more easily? So is it you know, kind of actually access, uh, more efficient access to training materials, so things will be surfaced in front of you uh, quicker, more effectively? Um, is it that they kind of you are um, you know kind of a, a pushed advice around actually you know do you need to do this meeting now should we do it later should we divide and conquer uh, should we look at kind of how you how you manage work manage your balance in life and things so there's a lot of innovations going on around there um, so have a look at Viva uh, again I'll try and drop the I uh, try and try and drop a, a link into the IM window in a moment 
because that's one of the key areas for innovation. But there's also some fun little things that we do as well. Um, one of the big things we've seen from a, a work life balance stress perspective is um, commutes. You know, people generally in the mornings when they commute to work, a lot of people, uh, that was their time to wind up for the day and get prepared for the day. Uh, a lot of people now just walk from, you know, kind of one room to the kitchen or from the kitchen to the study, whatever, whatever their setups is in a remote perspective. And likewise, at the end of the day, they would have that commute to wind down as well. So that you can kind of, you kind of clear their mind of the day and then walk into a family environment a little bit more refreshed. And so we're doing some interesting things like actually trying to build in virtual commutes. So this is an organizational decision. So again, part of this Viva workplace analytics type uh, tool set is that, you know, so we we have the ability or you can we can give organizations the ability to block people's diaries. They can move around so they have time in the morning to set up for the day, but also at the end of the day, they have time, time at the end of the day to actually shut down. Um, uh, I love this tool because it means that you know, I've been working remote like most of us, I'm sure. So it means when I walk from my home office into the family home, I'm hopefully in a bit more of a sane mood as opposed to full on work mode. So there's a, lots of little bits of innovation that we're doing to make that hybrid life easier, more effective, more and just nicer for people. A lot of the investment is going into actually how to make people's life more balanced. Well, I think we'll all vote for that. Um, so I think I think that's the end of the time that we had allocated. Um, Janice, looking for guidance from yourself. I think we probably have to wrap it up now. All right, thank you, Will. All right, uh, everyone, I am going to post a link in the Q&A panel. That is going to be a link to a short survey for this web conference. So we ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it. We value your feedback and uh, we do take a look at that and appreciate the time you take to do that. Uh, and with that, that is going to conclude today's web conference. Attendees will be able to access the recording in the next couple of days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to all of our presenters and thank you audience for logging in and joining us today.